Without much of a greeting, I get straight to tidying up. Seeing this, my ex-husband James finally speaks up. You don't even shed a tear, huh? It seems James was prepared for me to resist and cry when he pleaded on his knees for a divorce. To be honest, I thought he was a very vain person. He's not the only one who fell out of love. Well, you're the one who's going to have a harder time after the divorce than me, James. Rather than shed tears, I could hardly hold back the laughing. Huh? What do you mean? My ex-husband James looked at me with a suspicious face. Between a housewife like you, Kate, and a corporate hotshot like me, you're the one who's going to struggle. Plus, I'm planning to remarry, while you'll be on your own. Well, in a normal situation that might be true, but it seems like Emma, the woman you're cheating with, is quite trash. Wait, how do you know her name? My name is Kate, a 32-year-old housewife. I met my husband James at a social gathering. Because we were the same age, we had a lot in common and we quickly became good friends. On top of that, James was a salesperson in a trading company and made significantly more money than the average person our age. Thanks to him, I've been living a life without any inconveniences. There was just one issue. Our marriage life wasn't going so well. Although it's just one issue, it's a pretty serious one. I realized it had already been seven years since we got married. At first, we were truly in love, acting lovey-dovey almost every day and always having meals together no matter how busy James was. But that loving relationship had completely cooled down. Take care, what about dinner? I don't need it, I'll eat out. You can go to bed first, I'll be home late. All right, got it. When we were newlyweds, he used to say, eating together with you, Kate, is my greatest happiness. However, now it's normal for him to come home after midnight. He gets home when I'm asleep and heads to work in the morning without having a proper conversation. It feels like being avoided by a child who is going through puberty. Around the time when such days became normal, I noticed certain changes in James. Huh? Did he always use this hair product? And there's even a full line of skincare products. And there's cologne. Until now, to be honest, he'd hardly cared about his appearance. He didn't even have many casual clothes, since he only wore suits but suddenly he's splurging on branded outfits. I don't mind if he had some kind of change of heart. Plus, I always thought he didn't care enough about his appearance. But the reason for this change seems a little off. Observing James's behavior, it's suspicious. He started using his phone in secret and even takes it with him to the bathroom and shower. He used to leave it lying around on the couch and I'd nearly sit on it all the time, thinking, oh, I could have messed up his phone. Why has he suddenly changed so much like this? Because of James's behavior, I began to suspect him more and more whenever he got home late. Could he be cheating? But I had nothing more than suspicion and no conclusive evidence. And despite how cold our relationship had become, somewhere in my heart, I still wanted to believe in James. That's why the thought of my suspicions being true was terrifying. I started to act in a way to improve my relationship with James, as if I were turning away from reality. I tried to increase our conversations and proposed outings. But every time I tried to approach him, I was given the cold shoulder. Well, that's understandable. We've been married for seven years, and our relationship had become almost like a sham for several years, even though I'm trying to make an effort. Being treated coldly makes me really lonely. With such things going on, my feelings started to fray. One night, I could not hold back my feelings any longer, and I finally decided to ask James. Hey, you're not cheating, are you? When I asked him, James just looked at me and remained silent. Say something, are you cheating or not? My husband remained silent for a while. Then without a word, he stood up from the couch he was sitting on and approached me, seated at the table. He bowed his head toward me. I'm sorry, Kate, I want a divorce. I was at a loss for words by these unexpected words. Without paying any mind to my stunned silence, he continued. I've fallen in love with another woman. I want to start a new life with her. How dare he say such a selfish statement without hesitation? What did he think of our seven years? I had a presentiment that there was another woman, but I never imagined he would say something like this so suddenly. All my efforts to mend our relationship were in vain. Was the man I fell in love with really this selfish and cruel? When we were first getting to know each other, I thought there was no one else as wonderful as him. Unable to say anything, these thoughts just kept spinning in my head. Then my husband made another statement that made me doubt my ears. The truth is, she's pregnant with my child. I want to be with her for the sake of our child's future. I felt dizzy, as if I were about to collapse right there. I could feel everything before me turning white. 
We didn't have a child. During our seven years together, we weren't even using protection. In fact, we'd actively been trying to conceive, and even sought infertility treatments. Despite all that, we were unable to have a child. According to the medical reports, my husband had fertility issues, but he's been saying that he's eager to have a child. That's why, though we know how difficult it was, we never gave up. I had always done my best to meet his expectations. Well, recently our relationship had lost its spark and we hadn't been trying to conceive. It seems that the fact that he had a child with his mistress was a major factor in his decision to divorce. I've always wanted a child and I want to show my mom her grandchild as soon as possible. You understand how I feel, don't you, Kate? So please, let me go. Let's get a divorce. My mother-in-law has been suffering from serious illness and hospitalized for the past two years. I understand his desire to let her hold a grandchild as soon as possible, but to have a child with another woman instead of his wife? How terrible could this be? I always wanted a child too. That's why I even attempted fertility treatments. I thought we were sharing the pain of not being able to have children. Do you realize how selfish you're being? You betrayed me! In my anger, I shouted at him. But all James did was look down and apologize. It seemed like he was just waiting out the storm, and that made me irritated even more. What kind of woman is she? Just because she's having your baby, I'm nowhere near ready to accept a divorce. I urged James to tell me more about her. But he responded, I'm sorry, but please spare me. I want to respect your privacy. What? Just how selfish can you be? I have a right to know as your wife. Tell me everything. Even when I questioned him like this, James stubbornly refused to reveal anything about the woman he cheated with. She's two years younger than you, Kate. That's it? She's an employee? What a joke. He must really care about her. No matter how much I prodded, James didn't provide any substantial information. For a few days, we continued to discuss this. But during those talks, I absolutely refused to accede to James's request for a divorce. I didn't want things to go exactly as he wanted. All the while, James kept bowing his head to me. I beg you, I no longer have feelings for you. What's the point in continuing this marriage? Even my mother knows about this and she's okay with it. Apparently, James had already discussed this with my mother-in-law. I was unfortunately shaken up by that. My mother-in-law and I had been distant lately, but I thought we had a good relationship. Then, James kept revealing one shocking fact after another. I've already given her an engagement ring. We plan to move in together soon. All that's left is for you and I to get a divorce. I felt faint and nearly passed out. My husband, James, was seriously planning to be with the woman he was having an affair with. But I didn't agree to divorce him. This back and forth between James and I lasted almost a month. One day, James seemed to have lost his patience and pleaded on his knees. I can't take this anymore. Just accept the divorce already. Our relationship has been broken for a while now. There's no point in continuing like this. Please, please divorce me. My husband pleaded this, rubbing his forehead on the floor with a begging posture. I had been holding out for almost a month. Maybe it was time to accept the divorce. Fine, let's get divorced, but I'm taking alimony and my fair share of our assets. I understand. I'm prepared for that. Then we talked about the alimony in detail. I asked for $50,000. It's more than the average, but as I protected our home in the seven years of our marriage life, I wanted that much as compensation. James agreed. He also discussed asset division, and we decided that I will receive half of the balance in our joint account, and he would cover the cost of my move. Then I signed the divorce papers that James had prepared. As I filled out the divorce papers, various thoughts ran through my heart. Even though we didn't love each other anymore, we had lived under the same roof for seven years. And it would all end with just a single piece of paper. But I no longer had any feelings for James. The next day I submitted the documents to the city hall, and our mutual divorce was finalized. After the divorce, James married the other woman right away. I don't know if she hurried him or not. But since they were going to have a child, he probably wanted to be with her as soon as possible. I was honestly surprised at how fast he moved even though I hadn't finished sorting out the belongings in the apartment we used to share. That made me want to hurry up and pack my things as soon as possible, so I headed to the apartment where I used to live with James. As it turned out, the timing overlapped and James had also come to the apartment. Without much of a greeting, I get straight to tidying up. Seeing this, my ex-husband, James, finally speaks up. You don't even shed a tear, huh? It seems James was prepared for me to resist and cry when he pleaded on his knees for a divorce. To be honest, I thought he was a very vain person. He's not the only one who fell out of love. 
Maybe because I have been refusing the divorce for a long time, James might have assumed that I still loved him. He seems to misunderstand, but the reason why I didn't accept the divorce right away was because of my stubbornness not to go along with James and to investigate his mistress by myself. Well, you're the one who's going to have a harder time after the divorce than me, James. Rather than shed tears, I could hardly hold back the laughing. Oh, what do you mean? My ex-husband, James, looked at me with his suspicious face. Between a housewife like you, Kate, and a corporate hotshot like me, you're the one who's going to struggle. Plus, I'm planning to remarry, while you'll be on your own. Well, in a normal situation, that might be true, but it seems like Emma, the woman you're cheating with, is quite trash. Wait, how do you know her name? You thought I was just being stubborn and refusing our divorce? I've been having a private investigator look into her this whole time. James's face turned pale. In a few weeks, I had obtained a lot of information about his mistress. Firstly, her name is Emma. She's 27 years old. In fact, she's divorced twice and currently living at her parents' home. Emma, from what I hear, is a woman with loose morals constantly shuffling through men. As a result, even though she has a child with her first husband, he has custody and she has been forbidden to see her child due to her being a bad influence on the child. Indeed, Emma seems to have other men in her life apart from my ex-husband. The PI even saw her go into a hotel with other men. Just in case, I asked them to take photos as evidence. When I shared all this information and showed him the picture, James collapsed on the spot. No way, Emma can't be that kind of woman. She only had eyes for me, and we were planning to build a happy family. James seems to be head over heels in love with Emma. It's frustrating, but this woman does seem to have the talent to charm men. She doesn't particularly stand out in terms of looks, but she probably has a knack for behavior that captivates men. What? You're lying. This is all made up to shake me up. This photo must be fake. Good grief. Was James this foolish? Believe it or not, it's up to you. But even now, your mistress sees other men. Oh, not your mistress anymore. I meant your new wife, right? Maybe the child isn't even yours. James's face turned increasingly pale. No way, not Emma. These are findings from the private investigator, so the possibility of you being deceived is high. Perhaps among her multiple boyfriends, you were the one who made the most money. That's why she chose you to marry. It's an honor, isn't it? <laughs> even if the child may not be biologically yours, you wanted a kid anyway, so... Raise your child well. I said this to James as a final blow and left the apartment with my belongings. After a while, I received an email from James. He wanted to get back together. As I suspected, the child Emma had given birth to wasn't James's. When he confronted Emma, she retorted, I didn't know whose child it was until it was born. But James was already married to Emma. Therefore, legally, he has to raise the child she gave birth to as his own. James was just a money tree for her. As proof, when paying alimony to me, James had covered Emma's portion too, so James had paid me 80000 in total. James was furious and confronted Emma, but she said, You seemed happy to serve me, and one day she left the child behind and disappeared. James called me while begging. You were right, I was deceived. I'm really sorry, I want to start over again. I was just disgusted. You think I'm going to come back to you by saying those kind of good things? You had an affair, that's a fact. You betrayed me, that's also a fact. You need to accept reality. I hung up the phone after saying that. I heard from a mutual acquaintance that after this, James handed over the child Emma left behind to her parents, telling them to take responsibility. Emma's parents said, That's troublesome, you raise the child. But James stubbornly refused, saying, I have no obligation to raise a child that's not biologically mine. He submitted the DNA test results to prove the child was not his, and he also revoked his acknowledgement of the child. Emma's parents apparently didn't know that the child wasn't James's. After they found Emma, they took her back home and are forcing her to raise the child in semi-captivity. Apparently, they're keeping a close eye on her to prevent her from freely meeting other men. By the way, even though my ex-husband James has lost all ties with Emma, he has paid me 80000 in alimony, including Emma's portion, causing his savings to disappear all at once. He has been demanding Emma to repay the alimony he had covered for her. But it seems she doesn't care at all about him, and is saying she can't pay back what she doesn't have. As a result, James has sadly become a divorced man without any savings. In addition, he's unable to focus on his work due to this outcome, causing him to make lots of mistakes. Now, he's been relegated to a department in a rural area, with no prospect of promotion, where he lives a lonely and solitary life. On the other hand, I've moved back to my parents' house, and am helping out with their farming business. 
and after a few years, I fell in love and married a local fisherman. We don't have children, but I'm spending every day happily with my husband who is always kind to me.